Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about my favorite type of hero, which is a sweet hero. I do have a previous recommendation video for sweet heroes, you can go check it out down below if you haven't watched it yet. So this is part two to that, these are 10 more guys that are just sweet as can be that I love so much. I prefer the like sweeter, softer hero to the alpha. So I am obsessed with these men. Let's get into these books because I'm very excited to talk about them. First, I have The Cream of the Crop, The Sweetest Bean of All, Ren frickin' Bergman <laughs> from Always Only You by Chloe Lees. I am in love with Ren Bergman. If he were a real person, I would do anything and everything to make him mine because he is absolutely everything. Ren is a ice hockey player and he has the hugest crush on the woman who works for the hockey team, who works with like social media managing and stuff. Her name is Frankie. She has rheumatoid arthritis and she walks with a cane and she also is autistic. He hasn't really pursued anything with her because like he believes she's not ready for a relationship with him. Um, so he's never like gone out on a limb. However, at the beginning of this book, Frankie's home gets broken into, like the windows are broken, the door's broken, the lock and everything. So she has nowhere to stay. She kind of turns to Ren and Ren offers up the spare room in his home. And the two of them have to live together. So it's a forced proximity situation. There's even like a certain towel scene that literally makes me melt into a puddle. When someone gets out of the shower and there's a certain towel that happens, mm, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, but Ren in here is just the sweetest ever. He is so patient and kind and loving and the caretaking he has, like he does towards Frankie as beautiful, like again, melt in a puddle. This man is everything to me. I love him and I feel like he should be the standard for men everywhere out there. He is so sweet, so caring, so kind, and I can't say anything else about him because I am in love and I could talk about him for like days, okay? <laughs> Another sweetheart is a fan favorite, Archer from Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Brian here is new to this very small town that Archer lives in. Archer is kind of the town outcast. He was injured in a car accident a few years ago that left him with the inability to speak, so he's a speechless character. And no one in this town has befriended him in any way. None of them have learned how to communicate with him, how to sign. So when he meets Brie at first, he's a little bit grumpy because they meet at like the parking lot of grocery store because everyone else has treated him the same way his entire life. Um, but then one day Brie like bumps into him outside of that point. Archer finally finds someone who can communicate with him. Brie's father was deaf and so she does know ASL. So for the first time ever in his life, Archer has a friend he's able to communicate with and he is just so sweet. He's a little innocent in aspects and naive in certain aspects because he's not open to a certain part of the world because he can't communicate with certain people. At the beginning he's this very grumpy like standoffish guy but that's just like a defense mechanism for him and on the inside he is the sweetest being ever. Anyway so this is about like Brie and Archer and the inner workings of their relationship and this friends to lovers romance between the two of them and Brie trying to show Archer like how beautiful the world can be. And I just really love this one. There's a reason why this book is so popular. I think it is everything. Another Friends to Lovers is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Um, so this one's about Alex and Poppy. In college, they were like best friends. They did everything together. They even went on yearly vacations and they kind of make a game out of it to see like where they could go, like destination wise for like the cheapest amount of money and to make just memories with each other. But this book like takes place in two different time periods when they're in college and when they're like best friends. And then present time when they haven't spoken to each other in years. Poppy gets given this opportunity with her new job to go on a vacation. And she reaches out to Alex on a whim and is like, you wanna just do one more like vacation together? Like I think it'd be really fun. And he surprisingly agrees. And there's a lot of funny, things going on in here. There's a few like awkward situations they get put in and mainly you're trying to figure out why these two are not friends anymore. What led to the downfall of their friendship? But Alex throughout all of it is super sweet, very awkward at points. I thought this was a great friend to lovers romance and Alex in here was the sweetest friend ever, even when his feelings grew to more than just friendship. Next, I have Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese. So this is a romance between Addie and Theo. Theo is one of the sweetest guys ever, <laughs> like I've ever read about ever. He's so sweet. Um, but Addie is in college and she looks at the TA, so the teacher's assistant in one of her college classes and is immediately attracted to him and has like set 
her eyes on him. That is Theo in here. He's our very sweet and wink, wink, innocent hero. So Addie definitely pursues him at first. And this is so cute and awkward and sweet. And definitely how I feel like, like a college romance would start between two people, two young people. So I thought this was so sweet. Theo is so kind and caring and I loved him. He's one of the sweetest little cinnamon roll heroes ever. For a paranormal romance, I have Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. Luke in here is one of those men that completely simps over his woman. Like he will do anything for her. Like he's like a puppy at her feet, will do anything and everything for her. So Chastity in here works at this like family coffee shop. Luke is the hero of the story and he finds out that Chastity is his mate. Like he can send her, he knows that that's her. He's been sitting in this coffee shop for like days, like not consistently, like he comes back every day because he's so nervous and shy and doesn't know how to tell this woman, hey, you're my faded mate. <laughs> like wanna go out sometime? Like he doesn't really know how to go about it. But then he finally gets up the nerve to ask her out. But he doesn't know that Chastity comes from a long line of a werewolf hunters and huntresses. So Chastity knows that Luke is a werewolf like right from the beginning. When he asks her out, she sees this as the perfect opportunity to kill her first werewolf. So while they're on their date, she may or may not attempt to kill him and he may or may not fall more in love with her because she tried to kill him. <laughs> he is totally in love with her right from the get go. I just love this one. If you want like a oh, entertaining romance that is also super sweet, like you you have to read this one. Next, I have a fantasy romance. This is The Fae King's Curse by Jamie Schlosser. This is about Kirina and Quinn, and it's a very interesting romance because the fantasy part just took place in a fantasy world, but we also have scenes in our world. So Quinn and Kirin actually meet when they're children, I think around the age of like nine. Quinn and her family own this like estate and they have like a river running through it. And she's playing one day on the estate and she rescues a little boy who happens to be Kirian from the water. Um, Kirian is blind and he like discloses to her that he's actually Faye, he's from another world. And he ends up traveling to her world every single day to see her for basically the rest of her life. Um, well, this book jumps to when she's like 19 years old. Anyway, there is, however, like a time difference between them when their world. So one year in this Fey world for Kyrian equals one day on Earth. So Kyrian only gets to see Quinn once a year when Quinn gets to see Kyrian every single day. That might sound confusing to some people, but you'll totally get it when you pick up the book. Quinn comes up to Kyrian at the start of this book when they are starting their romance. Um, they've been best friends for years, by the way. And she comes to him one day and is like, I'm about to leave for college. I won't see you for a while. And he is devastated and does not want to leave her. So he ends up kidnapping her and taking her to the Fey Realm with him because he just knows that this woman is his fate of me. Like he knows it. So he's gonna like show her his world and everything. Kyrian is super sweet, considerate and understanding and caring, even though he does kidnap her. Like he's still a super sweet bean. And I just loved how persistent he was. Like he knew this woman was his. Like he was not taking no for an answer, like respectfully. Like he knew it in his heart that Quinn was his. Like he wasn't gonna take any other answer because like he knows that they're destined to be together. For an alien romance, I have Barbarians Touch by Ruby Dixon. This is the romance between Lila and Rokan. Lila and her sister Maddie are two newcomers to the Ice Home planet. I believe you read about like what happened to them and how they ended up here in the previous book in the series. This is book number seven, I believe. When she gets woken up from the space pod that she is in, she actually ends up getting kidnapped from one of the tribesmen from the like ice planet barbarian tribe, you know? He does this in hopes that it will like force resonance and like that'll be his fated mate. But that's not the case. Rokan is one of the other people, a part of the group of aliens. And he's like, no, like this woman should not have been kidnapped. I have this feeling in my gut that she is meant for me. And so he goes to rescue her. And sure enough, right when they lock eyes for the first time, resonance blooms between the two of them. But there's a language barrier here because Lila is deaf and she does not understand a thing that Rokan is saying. But she's very happy that this man saved her from this other alien. Rokan is so patient and sweet and kind and is doing everything and anything to learn Lila's language so that they can communicate with each other. And he is so sweet. He's one of my favorite Ruby Dixon heroes for sure because of how sweet he is. Another sweet alien is from The Alien Nanny for Christmas by Amanda Milo. I know the title says that this is a Christmas book. It's not. Literally the 
last five pages take place during Christmas time. The other part of the book, no. So I don't know why <laughs> this book, like the title has Christmas in it when it's not like a Christmas romance at all to me. When in here is a single mom to I believe two, two boys and she ends up on a whim hiring a alien to be the nanny to her two sons and she ends up falling in love with him and he is so cute. He bakes and cooks for them and loves these kids. Like he loves these boys so much and he's falling in love with Gwen on top of that. He is so respectful and kind. He's everything. Amanda Milo's heroes are also just super sweet in general. Most of them are. <laughs> and um, if you want to read like another sweet hero romance like by Amanda Milo, you totally should like because they're the sweetest beans. Another one you maybe wouldn't tell from the cover is really sweet is I Marry a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. But he is really sweet despite the fact that he's a lizard man. Susan is our human woman and she gets kind of like mail order brighted to mail order brighted is that even a phrase? I don't know. She becomes a mail order bride to Alex who is this lizard man creature on the cover and they get married right from the get-go right when they meet each other and she has to come live with him and his people and learn his ways and his culture and it really reminded me of Radiance by Grace Draven and the fact that like Ildiko in that book has to like fully immerse herself into the Kai people. That's what Susan has to do in this book with Alex's people. This is definitely a friends to lovers romance. The two of them are very awkward at first but they become friends and it slowly develops into lovers. I really enjoyed this one and Alex was so respectful and patient with her. He was so sweet. He was just so sweet. Like you couldn't tell from the cover that this lizard man is very sweet, but he totally is. And lastly, I have another monster romance. This is No Getting Ogre You by M. L. Eliza. This ogre is so sweet. He's innocent and sweet and caring. Our heroine in here is hiking along the Appalachian trails and she ends up falling into a cavern and kind of, I think, bonking her head and getting knocked out. Our hero in here is an ogre who lives by himself in these caves. He ends up saving her and bringing, him, bringing her back to his like lair. And uh, the two of them fall for each other despite not knowing each other's like language at all. And he is so sweet and kind. The heroine kind of shows him the ropes of certain aspects, okay? Because he's innocent in that way, you know? Um, but he is so kind and sweet despite the fact that he is a giant ogre. <laughs> Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 recommendations with super sweet heroes in them. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you have any recommendations for sweet heroes because I am a total sucker for them. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a lizard emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.